a monument to Palestine's most famous son. This museum in the occupied West Bank details the life and times of the former chairman of the Palestine Liberation Organization. This museum will remain with martyr Arafat's possessions, a witness to his loyalty, a beacon for generations to come, where they can get to know one of the greatest men of Palestine and the world in the 20th and 21st centuries. The project took six years and cost $7 million, but the museum gives a glimpse into the life of Arafat from the start of the Palestinian struggle against Israel. But this is a museum about Palestinian history also. We want everybody to know the reality and to get out with that feeling. When it comes to Arafat, we are talking about a leader and we are talking about someone from the family, the head of the family. It's the small things that give a better insight into Arafat and his life. The sparse bedroom in Ramallah where he spent 34 months under Israeli siege during the second intifada or uprising and his original edited speeches that were heard not just in Palestine but around the world. I come bearing an olive branch in one hand and the freedom fighter's gun in the other. Do not let the olive branch fall from my hand. There have been dark and difficult moments in their struggle, but Arafat went from so-called terrorist to a newfound peacemaker with a historic peace deal with Israeli leader Yitzhak Rabin and that famous handshake. He won a Nobel Peace Prize for that, but lost some Palestinian support. There are those who blame him for giving away more than he received at the Oslo Accords in 1993 of his micromanagement style, which later led to corruption developing. But everyone agrees that he was the embodiment of Palestinian identity and the fight for statehood. His kafir and gun were his trademark image. He stood just 1 meter 57 tall, but was of immense stature. He was a caring human being. He was kind. He could be angry. He was smart. He was religious. He was everything. He had 20 faces. But Arafat died in Paris and was buried in Ramallah without having achieved his lifelong dream, an independent Palestinian state. And 12 years after his death, that dream is still no closer to reality. Tony Berkeley, Al Jazeera, Ramallah.